So today we're going to have a go at making a coil dragon based on coils. So we're going to start with a stoneware clay. You can buy lots of different kinds of clay. The stoneware is predominantly will come out a white and then you can glaze that. But if we used a terracotta clay, your terracotta clay will come out this sort of colour after it's been fired. So the first thing we need to do, need to do is when we get a bag of clay, is we need to wedge it. Now, when there's different types of wedging, I usually wedge hand by clay, depending on the amount of clay that I use. Because um, if I was gonna wedge this whole bag of clay, it's heavy for those of you who carried it. So hand wedging is like, I sort of um, relate it to like kneading dough. So just move it around so you can see. So it's, you grab the front and you take it to the back. And what that does is that creates layers so it's like um, mixing it up. I usually do it standing up so that I can use the weight of my body to do it. Another way, okay, so what I'm actually doing now is reshaping the clay and I'm using the table, my body weight and the volume of the clay to reshape it. Another way of hand wedging is using um, your cutting tool, turning it over and flipping it back down. This creates the layers as well. And it uses a lot less of my body and my force to do that. Okay, so what happens is as you're wedging your clay, you'll notice that my hands get clay on them. So, you know, be careful what you're picking and scratching because everyone knows what you pick and scratch. But my hands actually start to absorb the moisture or the wetness from the clay. Um, the clay doesn't like that. So the drier the clay becomes, the more unfriendly it is. And you can do things like stick your finger in the water to wet it, but you've got to be careful that you don't turn the clay back into mud and it's too unusable. So you need to wedge your clay and handle your clay to the point where it's ready and then leave it alone, otherwise it'll start to dry out. Okay, so our little clay dragons that we've got here, it's mainly one big coil with one, two three, four small coils. And then we can add our bits of bling and our decoration on that as we go. So we're gonna start with, that's probably a bit too much clay to get started with. So the other thing is because you can see all these cuts that I've made in the clay, the clay remembers and it doesn't like having all those cuts in there. So that still might be a bit too much. Now, you might say, well, why don't I just use it and, um, you know, I can recycle it or reuse it. But the more I handle the clay, the more it what? It goes dry. It goes dry. Great. Um, I tend to use both hands when I work the clay. If I have a lot of projects that I'm going to do, um, especially if I help you guys, by the time I'm finished a class, my right arm is gaining because I use it a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to put it all back together. Um, you can't see me on the video, but if you notice, I actually don't need to look at the clay. I'm sort of trying to, I can feel where it is in my hands. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now I am going to cut a section off that. You will be tearing it with your hands. And I'm going to start to roll the clay into a coil. Mm, enough, a little bit more. So I sort of have an idea of how much clay I need because I've made them a few times. I'm just going to get the clay started. Yes, can see. And I'm going to start, see how the clay tried to come apart there? That's because it remembers that I've added another piece on there. So I'm the boss of the clay, so I'm going to say... You need to join and stay together. Oh, I'll move that bit later. Now you want to make it into a coil. Oh, that's not too bad already. Just listen for a second. Can you hear that little bit of um, slapping? That means it's not quite a coil. So when you roll it, you can feel it and you can hear it. Now it's a little bit um, 
uh, flatter at one end, so I'm just going to swish it down. Okay, now with our dragon, the head of the dragon and the tail of the dragon tapers off. So what that means is it gets thinner as it gets further to the end. So I'm going to start to help my dragon taper off. Now I can hear it start to lose its shape. Now you don't want to get it too thin because if your clay gets too thin, it'll break. And you can always cut some bits and pieces off later if you need to. So this is going to be my tail end. And this is going to be the head of my dragon. Okay, so that's your coil so far, the start of your dragon. Now I'm going to sit that up and I'm going to shape. Nothing like a dragon adult. But you can see where we start to add bits and pieces on. Okay, I'm going to sit there. Um, Chris, would you mind making me a little coil? Would you mind making oh, a little coil? Would you mind making me a little coil? One, two, three. Could you make me a little coil? So I'm going to get about that much clay. And I'm going to make a coil. Done. How'd you go? <laughs> okay, so this is where I'm gonna add my arms on. So this piece is actually too long for my arm, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Now, adding your clay on, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. By just pushing, that's still too long, by just pushing the clay onto there, the likelihood of it staying on your piece is zero. Okay, because that's just not the way your clay works. So there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can score the part that sticks onto the clay and then you score, what's the word? Score. The other side of the clay and you can help attach it like so. Wait, there's more. What you can also do, uh, I'll try and make it so you can see. I can see that one. What you also do is you can take a little bit of the clay from the piece that you're adding it on and attach it to the actual whole base that you want it to attach onto. So you can go the whole way around for that. Now I'm just using a kitchen knife, but you can use clay tools as well. You can use your finger and that will help um, your clay to stick on. Wait, there's more. There's also what's called slip. Now slip is taking, I'll just lay that down. <laughs> so slip is taking a little bit of clay, mixing it, putting it in some water and turning it back into a gooey substance, which is fiddly to make, but it's just turning the clay back into a mud and that's called slip. And you can also use slip to attach your pieces. But even that, I'm not as keen on that as I am using the clay from one piece to the other to help it join. So when you put your little eyes and your little de decorations for your dragon, I would really encourage you to join your clay on properly, otherwise it will come off. Okay, so mine's looking a little bit scary at the moment. Can I borrow your leg? Great. Okay, so I'm going to make a shape out of my leg and sit that on in here. Now, I would attach it a bit better, but you don't need to watch me make the whole thing. And then the other leg, can I grab that one? So I'm going to bend it over. Now, I've made a few of these, so I'm, and I'm rushing, so you don't have to spend the whole lesson watching me. And I would attach them properly. And now you can start to may I have your other piece. So this other piece, if you're wanting to, um, you could flatten it out a little bit. Now, when you're making um, your pieces, if you keep pushing, pushing, pushing the clay down, you won't get it off the mat. So once you push down a little bit, just lift it up. You might turn it over and then you can do re redo your shaping. Okay, so if I was going to um, make the frill for the dragon, you can make a flat piece 
cut that out, keep going. And then again, you get the idea, you can attach things to your dragon. So it's the same with the wings. You can actually make a flat piece of, piece of clay. It's really rude. Um, and then you can cut that out and then you can add little coils on to touch that. Um, you can see that my some of my dragon has scale marks. Don't worry about it falling apart. You'll get the idea. So one of the ways I've done my scale marks is I've used a straw. You don't have to, you can make up your own ways of doing the scales if you wish to put scales on your critter. Uh, his nails, if you want to put a little bit of definition into his nails, squeeze his hand and then I'm just going to use a knife. And then you can uh, take some of that, put some mark making into that clay to make his little paw. If you're looking at your mouth section, uh, I'm definitely going to make that taper off we've already spoken about what tapering is uh, that's not that's okay for a little shape and then I'm going to cut his mouth open you can have that open please don't come off there you go and you can actually scrape out a little section of there if you want to add a tongue or some teeth then if you're wanting to put an eye in there, you can put little dents in there and then you can make little balls and sit on there. Now, teacher demonstration wise, oh, you know, <laughs> but the idea is there so you can get to have a play. What I'll do is I'll cut you off some clay so that you can um, have a go at making your own little dragon. <laughs> the weather today, it's actually not um, too hot, not too cold, all those sorts of things. So this leftover clay that I have, if I wanted to keep using it like tomorrow or something, I would put it in a plastic bag and seal it to make it air dry because the air dries the clay out as well. Um, if I wanted to work on my dragon tomorrow, same thing, he would go into a plastic bag and I would work on him tomorrow.